This is the third in a three-part series of videos. If you missed the first two, you can find them at GuyMcPherson.com over the course of the last week. The United States Constitution and Bill of Rights are bobbing along the same waves as social justice and environmental protection, sold down the river by a nation addicted to growth for the sake of growth. Southwestern American writer Edward Abbey described such a path as the ideology of a cancer cell. Indeed, it seems very little matters to the typical American beyond economic growth. And for that, most importantly, we need an uninterrupted supply of crude oil. We need the Carter Doctrine. The world's oil belongs to us and an unhealthy dose of faux patriotism. Our lives are imbued with faux patriotism. We are manipulated by the war-loving corporate media and the war-loving politicians that, unsurprisingly, are enriched by war. We support the troops that bring us the baubles we're convinced we deserve, and we rarely question the real underlying costs of those baubles. Support the troops. It's the rallying cry of an entire nation. It's a slogan pasted on many of the bumpers in these divided states. Supporting the troops is pledging your support to the empire. Supporting the troops supports the occupation of sovereign nations, because might makes right. Supporting the troops supports wanton murder of women and children throughout the world, and men too. Supporting the troops supports obedience at home and oppression abroad. Supporting the troops throws away every ideal on which this country allegedly is founded. Supporting the troops supports the ongoing destruction of the living planet in the name of economic growth. Supporting the troops therefore hastens our extinction in exchange for a few dollars more. Supporting the troops means caving in to Woodrow Wilson's neoliberal agenda, albeit cloaked as contemporary neoconservatism. This is not to be confused with hope and change. Supporting the troops trumps power as freedom and fascism as democracy. I'm not suggesting the young people recruited into the military are at fault. Victims of civilization and a lifetime of cultural programming, like me, and perhaps you, these people are looking for job security during a period of severe economic contraction. The entire process is working great for the oppressors pulling the levers of industry. Perhaps most importantly, supporting the troops means giving up on resistance. Resistance, resistance is all we have and all we've ever had. We say we're mad as hell and we claim that we're not going to take it anymore, but sadly we gave up on resistance of any significance years ago, probably decades. We act as if America's cultural revolution never happened. We act as if we never questioned the dominant paradigm in an empire run amok, as if we never experienced Woodstock in the summer of love, bra-burning hippies and war-torn teenagers, Rosa Parks and the Cuyahoga River. We're right back in the 1950s swimming in cultural's mainstream instead of questioning, resisting, and protesting. We've moved from the unquestioning automatons described by Aldous Huxley and George Orwell to the firebrands of a radical countercultural worldview and back again. A generational sea change swept us from post-war liberators drunk on early 1950s propaganda to revolutionaries willing to take risks in defense of late 1960s ideals. The revolution gained steam through the 1970s, but lost its way when the U.S. industrial economy hit the speed bump of domestic peak oil. The Carter Doctrine, coupled with Ronald Reagan's soothing pack of lies, was the perfect match to our middle-aged comfort, so we abandoned the noble ideals of earlier days for another dose of palliative propaganda. Three decades later, four decades later, we've swallowed so much Soma we couldn't find a hint of revolution in Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto. In short, the pillars of social justice and environmental protection rose from the cesspool of ignorance to become shining lights for an entire generation, and then we let them fall back again into the swamp. The very notion that others matter, much less that those others are worth fighting for, has been relegated to the dustbin of history. A line from Eugene Debs, five-time candidate of the Socialist Party for United States President, comes to mind, quote, While there is a lower class, I am in it. While there is a criminal element, I am of it. While there is a soul in prison, I am not free. End quote. I don't harbor any illusions about my freedom. I live in police state America. Ultimately, I wonder why any of us bothers trying to be a good person. 
as Ernest Hemingway indicated, quote, the best people possess a feeling for beauty, the courage to take risks, the discipline to tell the truth, the capacity for sacrifice. Ironically, their virtues make them vulnerable. They are often wounded, sometimes destroyed, end quote. Vulnerability isn't so bad, but few knowingly bring on their own destruction. Instead, I suspect most humans, even those who consider themselves good, actually benefit from and even promote contemporary culture, the problems with which are legion. Instead of abiding and supporting imperialism, shall good people attempt to reduce or eliminate patriarchy one act at a time? I suspect this is asking way too much. When we recognize patriarchy and its impacts, where does that leave those of us pursuing authenticity? Indeed, attempting to conduct an authentic life in a culture dominated by patriarchy and engendering destruction is analogous to pursuing meaning in an uncaring universe. Does authenticity have meaning in such a universe? Is authenticity a desirable goal if the attendant goals are merely cogs in the machine of a culture run amok? Is authenticity another stumbling block on the road to happiness? Is authenticity yet another piece of propaganda promoted by the thieves and liars pulling the levers of empire to trap decent people into lives of service? Do we ultimately and perhaps unwittingly serve imperialism, hence omnicide, when attempting to serve humanity? If a life of service is a trap, why step into the trap? In avoiding the trap, are we embracing nihilism, a viewpoint that traditionally values and beliefs are unfounded and that existence is meaningless and useless? And if so, does the embrace constitute a pact with the proverbial devil?